Hello, Internet. Um, I come to you having just gotten my COVID booster about 24 hours ago um, because, you know, there's a pandemic on. I do retail work. I take public transportation. I have a toddler at home uh, and another little one coming in a little bit, a little bit over a month. Uh, and their safety and their interests, you know, kind of outweigh my desire to not feel groggy uh, for today. Um, so anyways, the, the, the upshot of that is I, uh, my arm hurts like hell. I uh, feel groggy and tired and sore all over. Um, I almost didn't make, want to make this video, but uh, my palate seems to be okay. So we're going to carry on and uh, I, will, I will do what I can. But if I collapse in the middle of this, uh, you know, into, into my whiskey and knock my bottles over everywhere, you will know that is why um, that happened. All right, let's get going. So the main star here is Great House 2021 from Hampton Distillery in Jamaica. Uh, I have said repeatedly oh, on, on many occasions that Ham, I think Hampton Distillery is pound for pound the greatest distillery in the world at this moment. Um, the, the Great House series is um, is kind of the, the one they put out, they started in, in 2019, um, as a kind of blend of different marks of different ages. Um, kind of what the staff wanted to do that year. And uh, I reviewed the last one. I liked it very much, the 2020. Um, I don't think Americans got the 2019, but I really enjoy the 2020. And uh, today we're doing the 2021. So I, I wanted to do wanted to give it some uh, sparring partners uh, for context. Um, and the, the 2020 was the obvious choice. But I was also thinking about uh, throwing in this little sample bottle I traded for with my friend Tan. Um, this is the Hamden 2010 LROK, LROK. Um, this is a release they did earlier this year. Uh, so I believe it's about a 10 year old. Um, one single mark, um, you know, single batch of barrels that came out at a stupendously high price of about 170 to 180 dollars. So I was not going to buy a, a full bottle of it, but I'm very happy to review this little sample. So that's the lineup I got. We're going to kind of go up by strength. We're going to start with the uh, the El Rock, which is a paltry 47 percent alcohol. If you're wondering why the most expensive bottle here is uh, is bottled at the lower strength, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, uh, all, anyways, all of these are are tropically aged. This this one is 10 years old. Both of these are technically about three years old. But we'll we'll get to the specific blends in a second. All right. So after the El Rock comes Great House. Oh, 2021. And then, in the last glass, Great House 2020. There's actually an interesting difference in color there. So I'm not sure if you can see. But uh, to my eye, I don't, I don't know if the light is really showing it. The, uh, the 2020 does look slightly darker than the 2021. Anyways. Um, uh, so uh, 2021 bottled at 55% alcohol. The 2020 bottled at 59% alcohol. So, you know, little adjustments from year to year, and that's okay. Let's uh, um, get this going. All right, start off with the with the uh, the El Rock, as they say. Um, rock, rock, planet El Rock. Um, all right, so this is quite expensive. Uh, got my notes. All right, I'm ready to go. Hopefully I don't fade. All right, here we go. Um, on the nose of this El Rock 2010. So it's really initially the sort of desserty side of Hamden Distillery. Um, El Rock is, uh, you'd call it one of the middle Esther uh, marks. At, it really is the middle Esther mark at Hamden. In the old classification, continental high Esther uh, rums really start around 700 uh, grams per hectoliter uh, mark. 
um, that's not super high. You can go way, way higher than that. Um, but it's still like I get I get why they cal- why they sort of still call it high ester at that point. It just means you have to sort of start making cal- like distinctions between you know level how how dang high is your high ester. Um, anyways, L rock tends to be in that sort of middle range. It's uh, it's certainly not not D O K. It's not Doc, but uh, it's a little uh, uh, higher than other options. Let's say that. Um, yeah, I'm getting lots of uh, like pineapple upside down cake. Um, it's very desserty, kind of like a like a southern dessert cart. Some like lemon meringue pie, but it's like a little a little burn. There's a little bit of a of a toasted thing going on here. Yeah, a little kind of just a slight, you know, ashy note. Lots of black pepper. So you're you're taking your your, your cake and your pie, and you're sort of cranking some some black pepper on them, and then you're gonna throw some some mixed olives on top. And a little seawater too. Little hints of um, kind of kind of raw aniseeds. We haven't ground our aniseeds. They're still kind of in their in their little shelly things. Um, certainly some minerality in this. There's some soapstone dust, um, cherry cola, a lot of um, Senegalese mint tea. If if you get a chance to go to a Senegal- Senegalese restaurant, you absolutely should. The food's fantastic. Uh, get the mint, the mint tea, just to have that kind of flavor note in your brain, because um, it shows up all the time, particularly in in pot still rums. The cherry cola is is starting to come out more now. There is some vanilla too, kind of going along with that, and some coffee notes. There's a little bit of a like a cortado thing, like a strong cafe drink, uh, and maybe you put some some gingerbread. Uh, on the side next to your cortado. I mean, you're getting the extra wood here, the extra uh, time spent in cask. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that improves this. This is uh, it does this doesn't have the the layers, the the breadth of complexity that I tend to, to tend to expect from Hamden. But you know that maybe that's maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. I mean. I mean, it's, it's 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 not great for something that costs what 180 bucks, but it smells nice, and it smells like Hampton. All right, on the palate of this uh, El Rock 2010, ooh, quite dry. The wood comes out more on the palate than it does on the nose. Very drying, very... Um, so there's some black pepper, some some Sichuan peppercorns. Um, there's some... Uh, a lot of like 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 old used coffee grinds going on. Like you reached into your French press the day after and kind of started chewing on your coffee grinds. A um, lot of fennel too. Tons of fennel on, on the... Especially kind of coming out on the finish. Mm. Sorry, I noticed I put my dropper back here. But it's it's got the, the fennel and the sort of coffee grounds, peppery notes kind of have this halo of, uh, of other stuff around them, and it's really this the stuff that was there on the nose. So, you know, the dessert cart kind of smells, the George, you know, the sort of deep, well, really sa- shallow south, um, so South Carolina dessert cart, say. The olive, uh, more green olive than anything. The seawater, the rock dust, definitely the mint tea. Um, uh, the cherry cola, absolutely. And uh, that's most of what's going on. Um, there's some, uh, tobacco, some like Virginia flake tobacco going on here, which is nice. I gotta say though, it's, it's by the, 
by the standards of, of Hamden, this is not sort of, you know, as convincing as other things I've, I've had in the past from them. Um, so I'm a little bit baffled by this, honestly. Anyways, let's give this a squirt of water, come back to it in a second, and move on to the, uh, the reason why you clicked on the video, which is Great House 2021. And I just splashed some water all over my notes. Oh, well, uh, carry on. All right. So uh, what do I say about this, this great house? So last year's blend was the uh, OWH, 80% uh, OWH uh, aged seven years, I believe. Um, so OWH being the lowest mark, uh, ester-wise, that Hamden makes, mixed with uh, a sort of medium-high ester mark, uh, the Diamond H uh, mark, uh, 20, at 20%, three years old. Um, this year, they've gone for something a little bit more serious. They're using 50%, uh, three, three, um, I'm sorry, seven-ish. I, I couldn't find the exact years, but somewhere around seven-ish years old LFCH, which is the um, slightly more funky, uh, uh, but not that funky mark um, that, they, that Hamden uses. It's, it's the one that's a, that's a step up from um, OWH. And 50%... Uh, of the Diamond H, which was there again in 2020, but in a much lower amount. Um, so that's, and that is a three year old. So, and bottled at 55% alcohol. All right, so this should be, you know, much higher on the funk scale than, um, than last year's edition. And on the nose, yep. I mean, it's just, it's a different beast from the, from the L Rock and, the Yellow Rock has a perfectly lovely nose. This is just like, um, there's, it, it's so much more vivid. Um, it's hugely sort of, okay, so it's, so it's doing the thing that I associate um, with High Esther Hamden, which is that hugely kind of floral, minerally note. That's, that sense that, that the, the, of, of like rocks turning into flowers and then back and forth and back and forth. That kind of rock flowers or flowery rocks thing. That is absolutely happening here and I adore it. I love that note. Um, and then, but then the uh, the mint tea thing, that's back. It's a little more dialed back than uh, from the L Rock, but it's definitely there. And cherry cola. But then we, we're, we're sort of heading into fun, more fun territory. Dried strawberry is in this. A little bit of like um, like a strawberry bubblegum thing too, along with the dried strawberry. Some kirsch, some like um, peach, but not really like, like like the fruit the fruit part of the peach. This is more like the the peach skin or something. Like you're smelling the little hairy parts. Black olives. Um, what is that? Um, you know, kheer, the uh, the sort of South South uh, Asian dessert with the the rice and the the milk and the kind of spices. I'm getting a lot of kheer on this nose. Some tobacco again, more like Carolina bright leaf tobacco this time. A lot of herbal teas, like you, like or or really more like medicinal teas. Like you walked into some alternative medicine tea shop and you just kind of smelled everything. That's kind of sort of what I'm getting. And even a hint of like. Uh, a baijiu, like a like Mao Tai or something. It has that slight sort of fennelly, sour, um, tempeh meats like orange peel kind of kind of thing that I associate with you know uh, sauce aroma baijiu. I mean, it's still it's a delightfully bonkers nose. It's it's. I mean, if you've had really really high ester. Hamden before, in, in some ways this will seem familiar to you, but it's, but if you haven't, like, this is from another planet, from anything you've ever tried. Yeah, terrific. Um, on the palette, on this Hamden Great House 21, here we go. Ooh. Lots to comment on. 
the first thing I'm going to mention is there is just ripping acidity on this. Just like sour wild berries ripping through my palate. Um, uh, combined with that crazy minerality, the, um, it, it, like, it reminds me of, of the, um, the Long Pond Tech, T-E-C-C, -E -C, that I had a while back in a way. It's not quite as pronounced as that, but we're, we're sort of gesturing towards that territory. That's almost coat roti kind of territory of, of um, just crazy minerality, crazy kind of, you know, wild berry sorts of flavors. Um, big. God, just completely dominates my entire palette. With the, it's doing the rocks into flowers, into rocks thing. The olives, the strawberries there, the cherry, lots of cherry, lots of mint tea also, some black pepper, um, uh, some perique actually, like uh, my favorite tobacco ever. Um, and all those sort of medicinal teas things I mentioned on the nose. Salted licorice, cherry cola, plus like a squirt of lime juice. So on, on the notes, if you sort of listed out the notes, it wouldn't sound that much more exciting than the, uh, the Elrock does, does, but it's really the way it delivers all of this. It just completely dominates and takes over one's entire palette. The, um, the oak and the, uh, and the spirit are both like, you know, pounding flavors in, into me and I'm really enjoying it. Um, and they're working well together. Oh, this is very, very good. Um, what a spirit. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the yardstick right now. This is the one to beat. I mean, this distillery in general, but you know, maybe in particularly this, this, this bottle. It's just a great representation of what Hamden can do. Um, okay, I'm going to give this a couple squirts of water. We'll come back to it. Three. I'm guessing this is going to need five. Let me check. Yep, we're going to need that fifth. Well, like four and three quarters. Okay. All right, now I don't have my notes for Great House 2021 in front of me, so I'm really just using this as a, as a comparative case. But let's uh, let's see what we got. So, um, very high ester on the 2021. Um, very floral, minerally in that in that special high ester sort of Hamdeny way. But on the 2020. Amazingly, it's really the wood that takes the lead on this. I've kind of gotten crap from um, friends whose palates I respect enormously um, for saying now and, and like a year ago when this first came out, this 2020, that this, this seemed to me the most wood-driven of the Hamdens I've had yet, at least of their official releases. Um, I've never, I haven't had you know, any, of, any of the really, really old stuff. But of, of the official releases, this is the one which really kind of, for me, brings, you know, in tandem with the floral notes you tend to get from OWH. Um, and the, the fennel notes. A lot of vanilla, kind of uh, dessert cherry, kirsch, a little sawdust. You know, more sort of traditional kind of woody notes. And it works. We don't traditionally think of you know, Hamden is being a wood monster. We normally think of it as being a very, very distillate driven dram. But here, here, what I'm getting is something that is really sort of leaning more in the other direction. And yeah, it works um, on the on the palate. Also, still completely very, very good way less minerality doesn't have the acidity um doesn't have it, it's floral but in a, in a slightly more soft um way than um than the 2021 is 
what I'm really getting is a heck of a lot of oak sort of playing with those traditional pot stilly rum sorts of flavors. Oh, and it's nice. Oh, that's really good. And it's really accessible too. I could see, I could see bourbon bourbon people getting into this. And normally, this is this is the kind of stuff they would be scared of. I think they would be a little scared of the twenty twenty one, but definitely the twenty twenty, there there would be on board. A little more smokiness coming out now. A little campfirey smoke. I mean. So far, without water, I don't. I, there's nothing to split these two up in terms of quality and scores. I mean, this is bringing more from the distillate, which I kind of like. I'm kind of into this. This is bringing more wood action. And normally that's not necessarily my thing, but when Hamden is doing it, it's so much fun that uh, um, I'm kind of charmed by the, by the excess of delicious woody notes in this. All right. Two. Okay, let's see if that's about right. Again, bottle a little bit stronger than the um, 2021, uh, uh, 2021. Yep, that's about right. Let's give that a, sec a second to settle in and we'll go back to the uh, El Rock 10 year old. 2010. All right. Um, so before, I mean, I, I, I feel like this is just... The way I was talking about this over before was, was that it's just... It's very nice. It, it's just kind of getting a little bit overshadowed by these, by these big monsters here. Let's see if it comes to life with a little squirt of water on the nose, now with water. Oh, well, that's fun. So the... The mint tea has really come out and taken over, especially sort of the, the mint leaf, the fresh mint leaf aspect coming out. There's even a little bit of like um, evergreen tree coming out now, which is a little festive. Um, it is the season, so you, you took your Christmas tree and you sort of, you know, kind of stuck it up your nose a little bit along with your mint tea. That's kind of what I'm getting. It's nice. It's not, again, doesn't have the sort of dimensionality of these other two and that I usually expect from Hamden, but it's a, it's a lovely note on the palate. Okay. So the dryness, which is initially a little bit excessive for me, has kind of cleaned itself up with water. Um, I get more fennel. I get more kind of overt fruitiness. That there's a lot of pineapple. There's some kind of lemon lime um, Seven Up action going on, which I like. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's just. Um, I mean, the, the problem is obvious, right? This is 180 odd bucks. Both of these are around 100 bucks. And I'm going to tell you right now, these are going to crush this guy in, in, in terms of score. Um, so I'm a little bit baffled by this. I mean, in terms of absolute value, I mean, I have come out here and, you know, done little samples of like, you know, high end expensive whistle pig and high end expensive Beaumore and stuff and kind of um, dunked on them a little bit. Um, this is not that. This is good. It's just, you know, in the light of the other Hamdens out there, this, this is starting to little, look a little bit, you know, not, not so great. Let me give this one last shot. Good. Very good even. But man, uh, among among Hamdens, and especially for the price, I would have to give this one a pass. I'm going to give this 87 plus out of 100. So again, very, very good. But 
you know, for the money, and especially among Hamdens, I think you can do better. Um, so let's leave the Elrock there and move back to the, uh, the Great Houses. All right, back to the 2021. Now with water. Um, on the nose. Okay, doesn't really develop that much. I'm getting a little bit more of a sort of custard pie sort of thing. No. Um, yeah, almost like a fennelly ham, like Hamden like custard pie. It just kind of comes out, emerges a little bit uh, uh, from the rest of the notes. But all the stuff that was there before uh, is, is still kind of there. Um, and those wild berries I was getting on the palate are, start, are also kind of coming through. So it's really a sort of custard pie with, you know, like sour berries on top. And then the strawberry bubble gum and all that other stuff. Um, not a huge development, but, you know, for something that was so good to begin with, I don't really care. Um, on the palate, ooh, there might be more woodiness on this than I thought. Um, with water, this gets um, actually very dry, even drier than the uh, the Elrock initially was. Um, it's very bitter, lots of fennel, pepper, wood tannins. Um, let me try this again, 2021 again. Yeah, ooh, that is dry. And I, I can tell I've, I've sort of reduced it to a, to a, what I would consider a proper drinking strength, sort of in the low-ish, low to mid 40s. Um, it's more the impression of heat and nippiness is more just coming out coming from the wood sort of coming out of the woodworks so to speak and um really making this uh quite dry in the finish and i'm not quite sure what to think of that i'm not going to dock at any points because it's not actually unpleasant but for my palate i think i would actually drink this one neat I think this this performs better uh, without water. So I would give this a good clean 91 points. And just with the caveat that I don't think it's a great swimmer, at least not for my palate. If you like sort of really dry kind of herbaceous finishes, this may be more the uh, 2021 with water may be more your thing, but. Still just so good though, oh man. Absolutely crushes, crushes so many, I mean, malts, let alone bourbons, floating around the $100 price point. Oh, spectacular, spectacular distillate. Um, and, but uh, we shall finish off with a comparative case, the 2020. Also gets a little bit more woody on the nose. Not cakey, this is more sort of... Um, like almost barrel char and the sort of uh, cherry sorts of notes. They start coming out. And a little bit more vanilla, more like um, um, almost like vanilla Coke, but in a nice way that I like. Again, I, I as, as dry and, and kind of woody as this uh, Great House 2021 kind of gets on the finish, this, this 2020 does give me the impression of being sort of more oak driven maybe that's just because um there's the distillate is less estuary um but i don't really know anyhow on the palate of this 2020 oh it's so good oaky ashy deliciousness some kind of stoked tobacco um, mixing with olive and uh, savory notes, the fennel, the seawater. Um, uh, it's, it's just so 
easy, for lack of a better word. I, it's it's a different character than the 2021. Yeah, I gave this 91 uh, earlier this year, and I see no reason to change the score. Both of these get 91, but with the caveat that these are very different animals. The 2020, for example, is one I would absolutely drink with water. Um, whereas uh, the 2021 does get quite a bit drier. But no less impressive. I mean, you drink these things and you're just, you're just going through your, in your brain all the other stuff out there, you know, that costs a hundred bucks and just, you know, just, you're just noting how badly these guys just crush them. Um, <laughs> Hamden is absolutely the story to drink, to, to be right now. The only, I do have to, to, to sort of end this video on a sad note though, because um, I do get the sense drinking this 2021 and especially with the El Rock beside it as such a kind of novel anomaly. So that sort of this is this is really the first Hamden that has kind of left me a little bit, you know, disappointed. Not to say that it's bad, it's just less than what I was expecting. And um Yeah. So I'm fully anticipating that this may be the last chance I get to buy any of these, um, any of this line, the great houses. Um, because I'm anticipating that by the time 2022 and really 2023 rolls around, word will have gotten out about these. The uh, financialization of spirits, not so much spirits production, but certainly spirits collecting, spirits buying, um, constantly demands uh, new assets to inflate. And, um, and we've, we've already been through this with, with whiskey. And in, in Europe, it's already beginning to happen with rum, has been for some years. And hey, he, it's, it's gonna happen here too. And uh, Hampton is on the short list. It's gonna happen. Uh, I would be shocked if uh, the 2022 was not allocated. And uh, if it isn't allocated, it's going to get ripped off the shelves in probably a matter of hours. So if you're looking at this a year from now to try to determine how good Great House is, it's excellent. Um, plan, it, plan your buying trip in advance because um, the, you know, the, the uh, real asset based funds are going to be snapping these things up in anticipation of the rum boom. Um, that's coming. That will happen. I mean, come on, these are, these are uh, uh, sort of yearly special things that come out with different blends every year. I mean, this is a collector's dream, and I'm amazed. I'm amazed that these uh, have been sitting on the store shelves for as long as they have. Um, you can still buy them in Chicago right now, even as I record this video, which is, um, you know, that will change. I expect that to change, and that's a bit sad, but uh, kind of where we are. Um, so thanks for watching, 87 plus, for the Hamden Estate Elrock uh, 2010, and 91s for both the Grace Houses. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rums. Um, all right, I'm going to go lay down probably. Bye, cheers.